You're listening to the Blue Jay Breakdown. Welcome to the Blue Jay Breakdown. Anna Bellinghouse and Jacob Padilla right alongside with you to talk about opening night at CHI Health Center Omaha. Jacob, a pretty good win for the Blue Jays, 105 to 54. We actually guessed the final score, yes. too, of Creighton, so that's an important note right there. Uh, what'd you take away most? Yeah, uh, 105 points. Like, that's a pretty good takeaway right away. Uh, just the way they shared the ball, the unselfishness, the, the passing. Uh, that's what they've been telling us uh, this team is the entire time, the whole preseason, summer, and all that. And we saw it uh, in person here in this one. Um, so they had 21 assists. And uh, 16 of those assists were for three pointers. Yeah, incredible. So, like, just the ball movement, the extra passes, the skip passes. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how teams are going to be able to guard this uh, this team this year unless they're just having a really off day, because you have to make choices. Teams so far have, um, I think Wayne State did the same thing. Like the way their ball screen coverage is, they're just collapsing. They're making sure that Kalkbrenner doesn't get that lob. And that actually worked against Creighton last year. Uh, Nebraska, pretty similar, packed the paint, dare mm -hmm. them to shoot, and, and some other teams did the same thing. And last year, Creighton was inconsistent shooting. Uh, so far, two for two did not work for teams that have tried it so <laughs> far. And Culper is the type of guy that, like, he, I mean, he only took five shots. He was setting screens. He was kicking out of double teams and getting guys wide open looks. And that's how you shoot 47% uh, from yep. three, hit 18 of them. So um, that's, I think, that's what this team is designed to look mm -hmm. like this year and obviously the level of competition is a lot easier than it's going to be down the line but you see what it's supposed to look like there right you see those glimpses for sure i think stephen ashworth said it best last night he said our go-to guy is the open guy yeah. anybody is a shooter on this creighton team and you saw it on display last night trey alexander is looking like he took even more of a step between last year and this year what did you like from him Oh man, he uh, <laughs> again level of competition D two, uh, low level uh, D one or whatever. But he's missed two shots in the between the exhibition and uh, the season opener. Scored twenty in both. Uh, had a few nice passes as well in the mix there. Nice dunk uh, too. Yeah, that 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 was pretty nice. Uh, shout out to Eric Francis capturing that. Uh, that was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, he just looks so comfortable uh, manipulating pick and roll, getting downhill and finishing either. Uh, above the rim or through contact. He had a couple of nice layups right off the bat. Um, he, I think three of his assists went to Steven Ashworth uh, for threes. Um, Ashworth hit five of them, three of them assisted by Tracy. You see in that kind of how that backcourt fits together mm -hmm. and those guys setting each other up. I think uh, Steven found Trey for one of his threes as well. So that's, uh, you throw those two together. I mean, they combined for 37 points and nine assists. Uh, and did not miss very many shots. So um, that I think that that backcourt is going to be a monster for teams to play with uh, or play against this year. And then Baylor Shireman doing what yep. he does as well, 15 and 8, a couple of assists. Um, had uh, hit three threes, and then also he had a dunk as well. Mm -hmm, he uh, did, which he doesn't do too often. No, uh, and then he uh, had a nice little up and under reverse and crazy English on that shot. So he said driving the basket's going to be something he's – focusing more on this year, hopefully with uh, bigger driving lanes yeah. because of the spacing. And we saw a couple of nice finishes from him uh, in that one as well. So those three combined uh, with 52 points on uh, like uh, 18 or 19 to 27 shooting, something like that. That's a, uh, that, that'll get it done. Yeah, absolutely. Let's talk about that four spot as well. It was one of the biggest question marks coming in. Mason Miller and then Isaac Trout. What did you see from both those guys? Yeah, I, th I think they both kind of got off to slow starts, uh, missed the first couple of shots, got some good looks. They didn't go down, but they both kept shooting. Um, uh, Mason hit threes, uh, two threes in the span of like three or four possessions back to back in the second half after missing his first couple of looks. Isaac went one for five. And honestly, the one he hit was the toughest look he got. Yeah. Uh, nice little off movement shot um, coming to the top after missing some good looks from the corners. Um, went two for three down the stretch. Um, came in clutch to uh, to meet the 105 point total he that we set. Yeah. did seal um, the deal. did seal the deal there. So, and, and, but I think the thing that uh, Greg McDermott pointed out that he liked best was the rebounding. Um, neither one of them really rebounded much in the Wayne State game. Um, Mason had eight and Isaac had six. And mm -hmm. they were both active on both ends, offensive and defensive glass. Um, and that's that's what they're going to have to do. Yeah. Um, they're going to have to hold their own on the glass, especially with – and Kalkbrenner is a guy that clears out space. He's not a guy that goes and rebounds out of his area, especially with the way that he protects the rim. A lot of times that will take him out of position to secure the board. Um, so it's going to be key for, in addition to the guards, guys like Mason and Isaac mm -hmm. to really get in the mix there. 
uh, and secure the ball. So that I think defensively will continue to be um, a, a work in progress for both those guys. And it'll be some both will struggle at times yeah. depending on matchups. Um, but overall, I think it was a pretty solid debut for for Isaac um, and Mason uh, for his second year playing. Yeah, I got quite the list of debuts with Stephen Ashworth as well. Obviously, we talked about him doing so well. Uh, I spoke to Greg McDermott preseason in that preview, and I asked him what's his biggest challenge for his team, and he said finding our defensive ceiling. One thing I will point out is that Ford a and only got to the three-point line and attempted seven shots, right? <laughs> so protecting the perimeter has obviously been a key for them. What did you see from that defense? And again, uh, not as quite a big of an opponent that yeah. Creighton will face throughout the year, but still some good glimpses. Yeah, and I mean, it, it's it's tough to gain anything from mm-hmm. a game like this from a defense standpoint. But yeah, seven three-point attempts. Typically, you come in here like you're a, as a um, the the underdog. That's the, the we're gonna have to chuck right, up a lot of shoot. threes because yeah. you're not gonna be able to get to the rim a lot of times, uh, and especially with the rim protector like Kalk Brennerson in the middle there. So uh, I think they did a good job of limiting those attempts of being mm-hmm. there on the catch, chasing guys off, trying to steer everybody towards Kalk Brenner when he was out there on on the court, which um, wasn't very long. Only played 20 minutes because no, nobody played really more than that. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I think we'll we'll continue to see how they come together. Mm-hmm. That is the question because. I think Kalkbrenner's presence gives you that floor, and obviously Trey's a really good perimeter defender as well. But mixing in the other new pieces there, you got to see kind right. of all right how 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 are all these guys going to fit together? Because um, there are, I think, you have some concerns in terms of just uh, quickness, uh, size, a little bit in terms of staying in front of guys. Mm-hmm. Um, so that is a question one we won't have answered for a few games. Well, another storyline: Josiah Dotsler not redshirting yep. this season, so he will see playing time and got about 15 minutes last night. Very valuable for him. What did you like about that decision? I guess did you like it, and yeah. what do you want to see out of him? So I, I, I believe the plan was for him to redshirt when he committed, mm-hmm. um, just because where he was as a player, where, where they with the veteran guards they've got coming back here ahead of him, probably wasn't going to be a lot of playing time available for that spot. But I think just the the work that he put in during the preseason, the improvement he made really impressed the coaching staff. Um, and that's what coach Max said over the last two plus weeks, he's really kind of turned a corner, really started to show like, Hey, actually he can, he can do some things mm-hmm. to help us this year. Um, so, and I think part of it too, is kind of the, the state of the roster is they only had 10 uh, guys available to play last night right. because Jason Green's injured. And then everybody else is redshirt. And even Sammy Osmani, a senior guard walk on um, he's injured as well. So they didn't really have like, if Josiah redshirt as well, he had nine available players there. So yeah. Max said they, they need one of those guys um, that of uh, the crew that could potentially redshirt this year to be ready. And Josiah was the one that showed him, hey, I'm ready for this role. So mm-hmm. he's a guy that can get downhill. I mean, his first bucket, um, great possession where a drive, kick to the corner, extra pass. Josiah gets downhill and then uh, gets to the rim all the way for an and one. Like that's that's yep. what he can do. And that's what he can bring off that bench as a guy that can create some uh, rim pressure. Uh, and coach Mack mentioned the defense is kind of, um, uh, the area where he, I mean, like all freshmen, he's got some catching up to do, but physically he's got the tools to, once he learns kind of what he needs to do within the system a little bit more and that comes, yep. becomes second nature, he's got the tools to be able to help them defensively as well. Yeah. Big East basketball is a little bit different than yeah. playing at Bellevue West against different class A teams, but he'll surely find his way. Uh, another headline signing day across yeah. the nation. Jacob, what'd you see with the, the signing class? Yeah. Really talented class. I mean, I broke down all these guys previously, some of their AAU film um, from, from this past summer. Uh, top 15 class, I believe, Nashville. Jackson McAndrews, the headliner there. Um, top 40 consensus recruit there. Top, uh, top 50. Um, top 40 for most everybody. Um, um, he's, he'll be, he's the highest rated player Creighton signed uh, during the recruiting website era. Um, and 6'9", absolute sniper. Dude can can handle a little bit for his size and put the ball on the deck and do, do some different things. But first and foremost, and uh, a shooter who can knock it down like he's pulling from 25, 27 mm-hmm. feet without like I, I don't know in all the clips I watch if I even saw him toe the line. Every shot was from two, three, four feet uh, behind the line. So that's going to fit right in perfectly yeah. with this Creighton system. Um, Larry Johnson, who uh, is six, four guard. He uh, is also a four star top 100 recruit. Um he is an explosive athlete, and so you add him to a shooter like McAndrew, who isn't who isn't necessarily an explosive guy that's going to go dunk on you uh, in traffic. Johnson is. He's a guard that can really get downhill, strong going to his left hand. He'll go up and punch it uh, if he's got room. 
Um, and so you add that to the shooting that Creighton has on the roster now and the other guys in this signing class. Uh, I know some, some of the guys are really high mm-hmm. on his potential uh, within that class. He went out the Penguins All-American camp and averaged almost 23 a game out of that camp. Had some really good showing against really good talent there. Uh, and then finally, the, the the third piece is Ty Davis, a 6'5 point guard out of Mountain Brook, Alabama, who um, plays for his dad there um, uh, for the high school team. And uh, Rivals is high on him, has him at 67 uh, in their rankings. Average 18 points, six assists, four and a half boards, shot 37% from three as a junior. Um, just really, really, really good passer. Mm-hmm. Like that's the thing that stands out most about him is just his court vision, his creativity, his live ball cross court passes um like he uh he, he, i think he fits really well with the other guys in, in the signing class and the guys they've got yeah. potentially coming back next year well it has to be a little bit easier to start recruiting if you're coach mcdermott especially after the lead eight run gets guys wanting to go on campus a little bit more you see him on national television day in and day out uh let's talk upcoming before i let you go north dakota state at home i would say a tougher test out of the summit league what do you think creighton needs to do best from that game moving forward yeah, I, I think the rebounding is something that they really improved in this game that um, Coach Mack w- was happy about. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, it was kind of a little, slipped a little bit in, in the exhibition game because, I mean, it is an exhibition game. Um, they'll, they'll have to continue to take care of the little things because offense is going gonna, is gonna to take care of itself. Mm-hmm. Like, they're so unselfish. Like, that's all going to be there. It's just con- going to continue being the defense um, and how, how all those pieces fit together. I know um, Bowen Skungberg is um, North Dakota State's top player. They're coming back, senior guard, 6'5". I, I assume we'll get um, Trey Alexander matchup there, but be curious to see kind of when Trey's out of the game, who right. is that top defender that takes on the, the opposing uh, team's uh, top perimeter option. Well, Jacob, can't wait to see Saturday. That's a 1 p.m. game against North Dakota State. Uh, and then, of course, you got Iowa the next week. We won't touch on that too early, but uh, that's going to be a big one at 9 p.m. on FS1. Jacob, thank you so much for your time. This has been the Blue Jay Breakdown. A Heard at Sports Network production.